Hey all, welcome. Um, I have no idea if you can hear me. Assume you can. It's 11.15. I just want to welcome people. Please, um, I would love to welcome you to turn on your audio and video. Um, let's, uh, I have no intention of talking at you for the next hour. So please join. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> cool. You can hear. That's awesome. Thank you. I want to welcome everyone to come on video, please. Come on in. Get comfortable. It's all good. No hair, makeup, or wardrobe is necessary. Maybe, maybe, maybe a shirt on top, I guess, but no pants needed. Yes, please join video, Sean. Thank you. Hi, Polly. You look fantastic. Give another minute. Okay. Cool to learn a new platform. Yeah, Sean, if you can come on video, we would love to see you. And then we'll get going. So we'd love for everyone to be comfortable during this next hour. So if you need coffee, water, food, feel free to eat, drink, do whatever you, you need to do um, to be comfortable. Hi, Sean. Hello. Awesome. Good to see everyone. So Representing Jersey Pride today. Excellent. Awesome. So fantastic. As um, if any more people come on, uh, we will integrate them in, but Let's jump in. So my name is um, Chris Rate. I go by she or they and I'm coming to you from New London, Connecticut. Um, definitely honored to be invited by OutCT to participate in this year's virtual NERP conference. So it's really exciting to be here. Um, what I wanted to do is just have us start by doing a go around and I will put into the chat, um, I'll model, but I'll put into the chat what uh what the first go around is so it's name pronouns racial racial identity um anything anything about your lgbtqqia queer identity you want to share um and yeah, where are you coming from? What pride group are you coming from today? Pride group slash region. Okay, so that's in the chat. Um, 
So I'll start. Um, my name is Chris, she, they, identifies white. And what do I want you to know about my queer identity? Um, I, it was funny when I was like thinking about this conference, I was, you know, I was good. I'm good at like living my little queer life here in New London. But then when I was going to be a part of a conference, I'm like, am I, what are the newest queer gay thing? Like, am I, am I up to date? <laughs> like, am I gay enough, queer enough? Am I going to like, say all the right stuff and I probably won't because you know we don't always we, we inevitably mess something up but anyway it was just interesting to notice and um what else do I want you to know I know I want you to know that I um I have a lovely wife and we have been married for six years but together for I think 18 this year so um and all the adventures of Long, long-term love. Uh, I will pass to Lindsay. Me? Yep. Okay, good. I took out my headphones and then I couldn't hear anything. Uh, so my name is Lindsay and my pronouns are she and her. Uh, I identify kind of just as queer blanket statement community member. Um, and I'm from New London, out CT. Uh, yeah, uh, it's racial identity, I guess, I'm Caucasian. So, uh, and yeah, that's happy to be here. Cool. Who are you passing to, Lindsay? I'll pass it to Sean. Okay. My name is Sean. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Uh, I, I, my racial identity is white. Identify as a gay male, uh, cisgender. Uh, I represent... Uh, Jersey Pride. However, today I am coming to you from Connecticut. I actually relocated. I live in uh, uh, New Haven, Connecticut, but the people up there call it, they don't, they don't pronounce it or they pronounce it differently. They're like New Haven and I have to get used to that. They don't say New Haven. I don't know. So, but yeah, so I'm excited. Um, I am, like I said, I was Jersey, born in Jersey, raised in Jersey. I still stay very involved in Jersey Pride. Um, they will always, uh, you know, have a special place in my heart. Um, I've been living out in Connecticut for two years now, and I have a boyfriend out here, so that's about it. Thanks, John. Welcome to Connecticut. Yeah. Polly. Um, well, first off, my daughter is in New Haven, so <laughs> I get there uh, fairly often to visit her. Um, my name's Polly. I live in um, Clinton, Massachusetts right now, although I am still associated with OutCT, having just moved here a um, couple of years ago. I, um, I identify as she, her. I uh, identify as a transgender woman. Um, but uh, off of what you said earlier, Chris, um, was when I went to NERP two years ago was the first time that I really truly felt not trans enough. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that is something I personally, I deal with a lot is just feel that feeling of not being trans enough. Um, well, else I'm very much a um, Northern European white Anglo-Saxon. Is that it? Did I get everything? I think you got it all. And I is um, do we have a lurker out there or two who are not Lisa and Marcy? Oh, Lisa and Marcy, yeah, Marcy, join us. Um, join us on video if you please can. And Lisa, thanks for pointing that out, Polly. I was like in the chat, so I was only seeing certain names. Um, Marcy and Lisa, if you can join video, we would really, 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 really love to um, see you. Awesome, Marcy's on. Oh, cool. Love the tiara today. It's International Unicorn Day. You're adorable. Yes, it? I didn't know that. Awesome. Yes, Marcy. LGBT people. It's every every day is uh, International <laughs> Unicorn Day. <laughs> well, technically, yes. <laughs> Marcy, thanks for joining us. Lisa, if you can hear us and can come on video, we would love to have you too. Um, in the meantime, Marcy, I don't know if you saw in the chat the the questions but feel free to jump in and share your intro with us um marcy carr she her um 
currently the chair of Staten Island Pride Fest, um, which is put on by the Pride Center of Staten Island, where I am the operations director. Um, I'm also, I'm trying to think NERP related. I'm also the global advisor, one of the two global advisory council members for Interpride and a district vice president for USAP, which is the United States Association of Prides. Dang. Oh, awesome. And you said Staten, that's your Staten Island based? Yes, uh, Staten Island, New York, which for those who don't know New York City, Staten Island is one of the five boroughs, but we are the least urban of them all. And, and mm. unfortunately, the reddest borough of them all. Hmm. Interesting. Um, thanks for sharing. And Marcy, your racial identity, did you say that? Uh, Caucasian, a Caucasian Jew. Thanks, Marcy. Um, Lisa, okay, I see, I see you in the chat saying you can't join by video right now. Um, so any, any of, um, any of the sharing we do, Lisa, when you are able to, because I know you're juggling different meetings, you can always feel free to, to drop your answers in the chat. Um, if you can't uh, come off mute and share with us and, and can't come on video, just, just utilize the chat as much as you are able. Cool. So, um, so the next question I wanted to do is, um, we forgot an introduction, Lindsay, of, of your pup. Uh, the next question is, so you just set a new world record that made it into the Guinness Book of World Records. What record is it? You just set it, made it into the Guinness Book. What new record did you just set? Anybody want to start? Awesome. Thanks, Sean. Um, I would, because I like to do a lot of driving and I do a lot of driving for my business. So I, I just set the record of most amount of hours and miles driven consecutively. How many was it? Oh, God. Um, 365 hours. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Anybody else have your answer ready? Marcy? I just won the world record for doing the most ridiculous things with my grandchildren. Awesome. Can you tell us one of those ridiculous things you did? Playing hopscotch for two hours. Nice. Thanks, Marcy. Lindsay, Polly? I don't know. I feel like I should be setting world records something to do with my dog because I spend so much time with him, but uh, I, I have, I, I don't know. I'm kind of at a loss. <laughs> I'll go with the most uh, pieces of Wonder Woman paraphernalia around my Ooh. house. <laughs> nice. This was actually a gift from Lindsay. Nice. Um, yeah. I, even though I knew this question was going to be asked, I don't, I don't have a clear answer. I think mine would be something about the uh, world's um, maybe like no most most amount of miles, yeah, walked or like number of times I was able to like I set the record for uh, uh, walking across. The United States, which has probably been done, so I, you know, I had to do it a couple times. Some sort of like outdoor physical feat. Lindsay, if I come up with your dog one, I'm gonna. Did anyone come up with what Lindsay's dog record world record is? The most time saying no, Oliver. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I can give him the world record for being like the biggest like bully at the dog park, just causing a bunch of mayhem. <laughs> Most times I have to say sorry at the dog park to people there. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, cool. So uh, what we're going to do now is this will be interesting to see um, 
how this works with five of us, um, if it's easier or more challenging because there's fewer of us. Um, and Lisa, you won't be able to utilize the chat for this one, but if you can come off mute, please, uh, you know, feel free to insert your voice. So you have probably played this game before. It's our goal as the as a group is to count to the number 10. That's our goal as a group. We can only count one at a time, right, in sequence. And we can't orchestrate, you know, who's counting when. So if two of us count at the same time, if we both say the number two at the same time, then we get to start over at one. So we all have to be off mute. There's no real orchestrating or, or planning of, of how we're gonna get to 10. Um, and the important thing is if more than one person says the same number at the same time, we gotta start over, okay? All right. So our, we're just trying to get to 10, it's easy. So feel free to- She, she says over. that now. <laughs> okay, one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Oh, wait. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, easy, easy, <laughs> easy, easy, easy. Um, let's just see if we can as easily get to 20. So one. Shoot. Two. Two. Oh, shoot. <laughs> All right, we'll start over. One. Two. What Three. is Sorry. Ugh. I have to mute myself a minute till it stops. Sorry. No worries, Marcy. It's all good. There's we five. Three, right? Yes. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. 17? 18? 19? 20. Woo! <laughs> I was nervous at the end there for a second. I feel like awesome. we're all like watching each other's eyes. We're like, yeah. okay. <laughs> Can I like tell whether or not, okay, they're about to say something. I like, I like pick a number and I'm like just waiting till that number is up and then I'm just jump on it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Good, good different strategies and, and tactics. So what I want you to do is like, Reflect for a second um, beyond this experience, but think about whether it's in your personal life, in your professional life, um, in your pride, you know, organization and work you do. When in a group that requires a group to work together, Think about your typical, like average default. Are you the person who jumps in right away to initiate, begin some sort of like, take some leadership to, to start the thing off? Do you hang back? Are you someone that like views yourself as a, as a helping role? versus the take charge role, versus the hang back role. Just reflect for a moment on, and you may find you play different roles depending on the context. So in your you know pride organization group, do you play a leadership role, but then you notice that um, maybe in your you know paid work life, you're hanging back more. Just, just like sort of reflect on your default for a second. You can write a few things down if you want to, or you can just think about it. And I'm gonna get a document open to share.
Okay. Um, so let's see if I can. Oh, and actually. So when I was thinking about, you know, like expanding minds and expanding pride, um, which I love as the theme, I was thinking about, I was thinking about like where my own areas, uh, where my mind needs to expand in order to, um, you know, where are my own areas for growth and where are my own areas for sort of change. And, and so this, and this to me is a, this social discipline window tool, which I actually don't know that you can see well enough. Um, what I really care about you seeing is the box. Um, if people, if people click the little arrow at the top right above the chat, they can actually move it so that the screen becomes bigger. Oh, cool. Okay. That was a helpful tip. Um, it looks like on, on my end, if I click, if I click it twice, it either becomes like a little screen as if it's one of a, the participants or it becomes the main screen. It's still actually not as big as I'd like. So let me explain. What's the better way to do this? I can see the box just you can fine. See okay. you can see the box I, just fine. I, I, I can see everything. Mm -hmm. okay, I mean, cool. the writing, the writing above and below the box um, is a little tough, but I mean, Not you so can much. see Paul McCold and Ted Wachtel, but after that, it's hard to read. Chris, okay, if cool. you go into view where yeah. the document is, yeah, you should be able to um, hit like where it makes you just a little bit bigger. So hit view, and then I think it's yeah. like hit one page, or no, hit um, hit zoom. Yeah, that should work. Or yeah, yeah, it's like page width, yeah. So then page it you width. see what says page width. Oh, I see. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So then it brings cool. it a little bit and then yeah. you can and yeah, then, and then as see. you're going through it, you can kind of control what you want us to see. Can you can you also see? hide the ribbon at the top of the word if you want, but Ooh, how do I do that? See over on the right, uh, you hit that little up arrow. Below your X, below the blue, right yeah. there. Yep. Boom. Nice. Oh, Good I learned job. something today. Thank you, Polly. Uh, okay, cool. cool. Yeah, and then so, to get that back, if you click anything on the ribbon, there, there'll be a little pin over on the right where that up arrow was, and you just click that pin back, and it'll bring it back full time. Got you. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much for those tips. So, so this social discipline window I learned about in my, like, restorative justice, restorative practices education. And what I think is so useful about it is oftentimes when uh, when I'm reflecting on my own areas for growth or if I'm in a, you know, an anti-racism program or something that's asking me to sort of like reflect on my own bias, um, I know that I find it challenging because um, I oftentimes can't see the difference between an area for growth and like my value as a person. So I can start to feel like when I, when I reflect and unaware of some of my bias, I can start to feel like, oh, um, I can just get bogged down with like, what's wrong with me that I struggle with that. So this, this social discipline window to me helps me reflect in honest ways because it is no longer about me, Chris, as a person. It's just about some behaviors that um, I've gotten trapped into doing or taught to do. So this social discipline window looks at different ways we interact with others based on two different combinations, how high and low we are, uh, in terms of how clear are we with our boundaries that we set, how, um, how clear are we with our expectations? The word this uses here is is control. Um, don't get too like 
if you don't like that word, don't get too fixated on that because it is more like how clear are we with our expectations, our needs, our our, um, our boundaries, limit setting, things like that. And then in combination with how clear, how supportive are we? How nurturing are we? How caring are we? So when we combine two different levels, if we are not very supportive, um, but we're really high on control, we end up being in what is called the two box. So the two box is awesome in that it oftentimes is this take charge, um, get things done, jump right in, not wait for other people to initiate because like, I'm just going to get the ball rolling. There's really positive things about that. Um, also being in the two box means we are very clear about expectations. We are very clear about boundaries. Um, there's nothing vague about it. Then if we look at being low in control, but high on support, we end up being in the four box. So this is when we oftentimes uh, might be people who sacrifice our own needs, our own boundaries, what we need for ourselves in, um, in exchange for helping others and supporting others and caring for others. Um, and that can sometimes be a secret control place. I know um, in my work life in the past, I would really struggle and fall into the four box sometimes, it would look like a colleague saying to me, um, could they help me with something? And me saying, no, no, I got it. Um, but secretly wanting to do it my way. And so that like being in the four box can be a sort of a secret control. Um, it sometimes can be there though, just because we feel bad for someone or we want to be helpful. Um, we feel like it's our job to 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 be supportive and caring and nurturing and and sort of everything else is secondary. If we are low on both, we end up in that not box. That's when we're not we're we're laying we're sitting back, we're not really participating, we're not really active, we're not taking on responsibilities, nor are we being incredibly supportive or nurturing. And the goal, there's a million reasons we go to the not box, sometimes out of fear, sometimes out of safety and survival, right? As, as queer folks, we know that like going in the not box is sometimes actually like really critical and essential for survival. Um, so I don't want to minimize that at all. Um, but the goal and, and, you know, this workshop is titled like building us. The goal is as much as possible, like healthy communities and healthy relationships be it personal or professional or our pride organizations really exist in that with space where we can have incredibly high expectations, really clear boundaries, really clear um, set of limits with the necessary support and encouragement to meet those expectations. So, what I want you to do is, again, I asked you to sort of reflect on, like, what's your what's your default at home or what's your default? Like, it, it, at home, my default when I'm under stress is to go to the two box. My expectations go even higher than they were before. I can get super critical where it's like I see the, the chores that haven't been done and not all the cool stuff and great stuff that has been done. Um, and I can totally go hard and be in that two box. At work, like I told you, I would find myself sometimes falling into the four permissive box. Um, so I guess I just want to pause and ask anyone if there's any questions, if this is making sense or, or if anyone's confused. Makes sense to me. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. Makes, it makes sense. Um, Chris, would you be able to explain a little bit more with the restorative um, box yeah. a little bit more? Yeah, totally. For, so, um, so the restorative box, imagine like, imagine, you know, like this was on the floor and like there were these quadrants were on the floor and we could actually sort of walk, right? 
Um, a lot of times we think that building community requires, if you were to pick one of those boxes, um, exclude the with box for a moment, the two not or the four, which box would you say is like the best for building community? Permissive, right? Four. Yeah. Four. That yeah. tends to be what, right? That tends to be, and, and the good thing about the four and permissive boxes, it is super supporting and, and nurturing and encouraging. It oftentimes is also where like we avoid conflict. And like we avoid telling people how we really feel because we don't want to hurt their feelings. Right. And so the, the benefit of the two box is we're clear with all those things. We're clear with our expectations and our needs and our boundaries, but we don't actually support people to be able to fulfill those things. So if we're a manager at work, we might be real clear about expectations and deadlines and things that need to change. But when our, our supervisee fails to meet those expectations, we don't ask like, what support do you need? If we're stuck in that two box, we don't ask like, how can I better support you to meet those? We just think a deadline was missed. That's unacceptable. I will reiterate the new deadline and you better get it done. The with box is what allows us to like pair these things. It allows us to say like, my expectation was clear, right? So if you're support, whether it's, again, it's in work or home or, or in, you know, in your like youth pride group, like, the expectations are clear that this is a place that's supposed to be supported for everyone. So I'm still going to maintain those expectations. I'm not letting that down. I'm not coming down on that control uh, access. access ac yeah, access. What I want to do, though, is provide the support for people to be able to actually meet the expectations. And... What I think is important to know and, and reason I actually really like to use this box when thinking about oppression is we've each been taught to be in some of these boxes based on our different identities. So there's definitely defaults to certain boxes just based on like who raised me and what I saw, right? My mom was a two. I learned to be a two from her. And that doesn't change the fact that I was socialized as female for a big percentage of my life and that taught me like a good girl and a good woman should be in the four box right my whiteness has taught me that when it comes to interacting with black indigenous people of color that i know better than they do whiteness and racism has taught me that so that's automatically put me in the two box right my queerness um my you know my non-binariness has oftentimes meant that, um, you know, to stay safe, I will sometimes put myself in that not box, right? And not show up fully and not participate fully. So what's useful, and I want us to spend a couple minutes thinking about now is, and I, I'll, I'm gonna set the timer for like three minutes. And just gives people space to write or think, whatever you prefer. But, and feel free to, um, at some point I'm going to close this, this stop sharing so we can see each other bigger. Um, but feel free to draw the, the grid if you want to. The, the, the only words that really matter are sort of the to, not, for, and with. Reflect on what boxes have been, you been taught to be in. And sometimes it can be useful to think about, like, do I go in the two box with certain people? Or dependent on how I perceive people, you know, am I more likely to go to the two box or the not box or the four box? Like, when, if, we're, if, we, if this is really about expanding minds and expanding pride, like, we've got to identify those pieces within us, right? Where we where we notice, ooh, like I'm not, I don't, I'm not living in that, that with box with, with that group or that individual. Like I've been taught some bias and I want to work on it. So I'm going to set the timer for three minutes. Um, 
feel free to write or just think, but try and identify under like under stress. What boxes do you, do you, do you default to other than the with? Or can you notice any sort of bias coming out of you, um, dependent on certain groups that takes you to that two or the not? Oh, I don't want the, the not can also look like I don't want to work with those people, right? I'm not going to go out of my way to invite those people to our group. The two, the not, or the four. All right, I'll set my timer for three minutes and then we'll chat. Oh. All right, one minute left. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing. Um, I also noticed um, Pierce. Looks like Pierce joined us. I just want to welcome you to come on video if you're able to, Pierce. So um, what, what are some reflections anybody wants to share about the social discipline window, about boxes you default to in your personal, professional, pride life? Anything that struck you as you were reflecting? I feel like for me, my goal is to do with, but that I find it other people maybe not stepping up to the plate. So I end up going to four uh, and then I am just feeling like I have to do a bunch of stuff without the help of other people, but then I crash into the knot. <laughs> yes. So brilliant. And then I, I, I just kind of shut down because it's too much. <laughs> really, that, that's brilliant. Can anybody relate to that? Just by like a, a nod or show? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and so all of us, all of us aspire to live in the with, and because we're human, we will never live there hundred percent of the time. Like we will find that we bounce around to these different boxes. 
our goal is to always get back to that width because the, I, I didn't read this to you. It was on the sheet. It, um, the fundamental hypothesis of this, of the social discipline window is that human beings are happier, more cooperative, more productive, and more willing to make changes in their behavior when we do things with them rather than to them or for them. So Lindsay, awesome example of like, wait a minute, like people, I think I'm in the with, but people aren't meeting the expectations. So I guess I got to do it, right? There's like a narrative in your head that's sort of like, I guess I got to do it or it'll just be easier if I do it. So you go to that four, 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 but then we can burn out. Mm -hmm. Anybody have a different, different thing they want to share or something off of that struck you? Marcy. Um, actually, what I found about the whole thing that was fascinating to me is, for me, I can only speak for me, over Absolutely. the span of time, especially like the last 10 years, the older I get, the more assured of who I am and where my place in the world for me has become. Mm -hmm. So I find myself in the with box way more, not all the time, obviously, but way more than I would have 10 years ago. Way more. Awesome. Which I find and really interesting. Like I never even looked at it and it's kind of blowing my mind right now. Yeah. Marcy, would you mind telling us 10 years back, was there one of the boxes you would default to more than you do now? Oh, I would have been in the corner cowering on the left-hand corner, just in a ball. The knot box. Yeah, oh, yeah. Just make, trying to make yourself small. Very knot, yes, very knot. Yeah, okay, thank you for sharing that. Sean? Yeah, so I think for me, I can definitely relate to Marcy in the sense that, like, I only within, like, the past, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll probably less time, so probably within the past, like, five years did I get, like, a little bit more um, comfortable you know, and now I've kind of been more in the with box, you know, and feeling like I can, okay, break out. But I also feel like now it's, it's you know, I, I use the term like street cred. I have a little bit more street cred when I like, you know, get involved in more of these pride functions because it's like, oh yeah, no, that's Sean. He, you know, he's, he's good. He knows what he's doing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I, you know, it, this whole exercise that you were showing us, kind of it kind of like reminded me of my little like five minute blurb that I like give like volunteers that I come in contact with because I do a lot of like the volunteer coordinating it is like how do you want me to interact with you throughout the day because learning how how you know because you know you you might come off as like a grade a bitch you know yeah, because you know, you you know, you get to you know, you get to those points where you're like, okay, all right, this is what needs to get done throughout the day, and then you're like, okay, now you're at the two box, and then it's like, whoa, 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 people don't like that, you know, they're you know, especially if it's like their first time, they're like, oh god, this guy's like an asshole, you know. So you have to like, so I've kind of like do like a five minute little blurb before I like like introduce myself of like, okay, like let's go around, you know, uh, like around the room and talk about what type of a learner you are and what kind of person you want. Like some people are like, just tell me what to do and I'll go do it. And I don't need like the control or like the discipline and the, you know, like um, I don't need to be micromanaged, but then some people are like, no, no, I want, you know, the support. I need you to like check in with me throughout the day and see how we're doing. So just kind of like, I feel like you can even like apply this box on like how you communicate with people as well. Heck yeah. 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 And right. Right. I mean, so what, how brilliant for us to like actually ask each other, like, what does support look like to you? Yeah. Oh right. yeah. Support's different for every person, whether yeah. or not you want advice or, or, or just vent, you know, some people don't want, you know, you to be given advice, you know, if they're having a difficult time on a project, you know, or something or a task that you've given them. They rather you, you know, list, sit there and, you know, and, you know, oh, this was awful. You know, we had to do this. We had to move around these chairs and it ended up being a long, longer project versus, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, kind of uh, atmosphere. Yeah. So that's really helpful. We can use this as a tool to um, really open up conversation about, like, how do we improve our 
are like, what is the best way for my put to me to put my expectations and boundaries out there? What is the best way for me to support you? What does that look like? And then we can also, we can also let people know about our, um, you know, our struggles and our areas for growth. Like I can say to my daughter, Eliza and my wife, like, you know, under stress, like I fly to that two box and I, um, I need, you know, I need help in that moment. Like I need a little support, um, to help me feel less overwhelmed and less out of control, which is why I'm in that box. Like we can, we can work with each other. Like you can even say to me, Ooh, Chris, you're in the two box. And that's going to help remind me like, right, that's not where I want to live. That's not where I want to be. We can say to each other, like, Hey, you see me going into the not box, like help pull me out. Or, Hey, I noticed you were really engaged in that meeting. And then it seemed like you checked out, like you went to the not box. What happened? Or, wow, I I know you're trying to set boundaries and be less in that four box. And then I, I I overheard you, you know, with so-and-so and they asked if they could help. And you said like, no, you got it. So can I, how we can just support each other by using this language. Um, any other thoughts or questions on the social discipline window at the moment? So I grew up in the two box. Uh, my parents were very much in the two box. And then um, then I was in the army for uh, several years. Um, so I was either having it done to me or I was doing it to others. Um, very much a two box. Um, but when it reaches a, when things reach a critical point, I immediately jump to four. Um, I'm trying to think about, you know, the way things are like um, when we have our pride at the beach and there's something that that has to be done rather than go try to find somebody to do it or work with people. I'm just like, I'm going to go do it. Boom. You know, and, but, but that's, at the event itself, prior to the event, I'm not like that at all. And you can ask Lindsay, but um, I I tend to think of myself, however, as in a completely different box that's not there, the manipulative box. Um, mm. that's, that's my skill is to uh, get other people to do things without... Uh, you know, kind of like helping control them to do things. And I'm not, I'm not proud of that. Don't mm-hmm. misunderstand me. At work, at work, I start out because I, I'm responsible to get certain things done, but I don't have authority. So I start out in the with box. I'm like, we have to get this done. You've got to get your part done. And if they don't get their part done by Tuesday morning, I go down to the four box because, mm-hmm. because again, the mission, I think about it as the mission that has to be completed, whether it's what has to be done at work, what has to be done at pride. If there's something that has to get done when the comes down to crunch time. I'm not going to let it fail. I'm not going to leave it to somebody else. I'm just going to go do it. I had a thought when you were saying that, like in, in terms of being manipulative, isn't that kind of in the two box because you are controlling the situation in a little bit? And I, I think yeah. that the other thing that's hard is like when you work in groups, like not everyone is necessarily healthy enough to be in the with. So you almost have to oscillate between two and four because people kind of are dropping the ball. <laughs> so. I mean, and it gets a little exhausting to be like, how can I support you when like people just don't show up? Like their projects are awful. (laughs) Yeah. So yes, yes. All, all of this is true. And I think if we were more comfortable doing conflict, we would have to oscillate between the two and the four less. Okay. (laughs) I think, I think that's that. I, um, I think frequently when a ball gets dropped, I know for for myself, um, there is a pattern of not always addressing the fact that the ball got dropped and focusing just on, well, I guess I got to be the one to pick it up and like finish through because it is about that. I will focus like Polly, you said, sort of it's like that end goal. Like we got to get this done. But then unfortunately what that does is like, I just bailed someone out. And so the next project that comes around, like I've now set an expectation that like, if, if, you know, if something falls short, 
Oh, well, Lindsay will get it done. Or like, oh, no. just because when do they drop it done? After they drop the ball and I do it for them, I call them in the office and say, listen, you know, you you drop the ball on this. What's what are we going to do? So make sure this doesn't happen again next time. And you if, think, if we can't come up with some process, then you're not going to get the opportunity to drop the ball next time. Not so good at holding people accountable. <laughs> Chris, do you think that like a lot of times people that do, like where it's like they don't take the time to um, address why the ball got dropped and just take care of it? Is it do you think that it's do you think it's oriented because of the way that people are like, OK, well, it still needs to get done. We're just going to do it. Or do you think it's that those types of people that don't like to do that? Is it that they don't like conflict? I think it's probably some of both. OK, I think it's some of both. Um because I know I find myself doing that, like, and it's not because I don't want the conflict. I think it's almost like, well, we're in it. We're in the event right now. I, I don't have time to, you know, go toe to toe with you. Let's just yeah. get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I yeah, absolutely. Um, I do sometimes think that, like, we don't have time to address it. A is definitely a disservice in the long run because then we end up oftentimes in this cycle of cleaning up after someone frequently or feeling like our expectations aren't being met. Maybe we're not cleaning up after them, but um, we have, yeah, we have, we, we, we oftentimes, and I, I don't know if it's the capitalism mindset or what, but we prioritize the end goal over the relationships. And that hurts us, that hurts us, and that hurts, that hurts all of us in a lot of ways. And then if you're going to enter into it, different levels of power um, at play in our relationships and powers at play in all of our relationships, right? So all of a sudden, I'm not just interacting with another white colleague, I'm interacting with like a BIPOC colleague. So like now race is, in, you know, race is coming into, or it's like, um, you know, their cisgenderness against my non-binaryness or their straightness against my queerness or my thinness against their fatness. There's all these different ways in which power and privilege are playing into our relationships. Um, we've been we've already been taught to prioritize the relationship just to get the end goal done. And and based on who we're in relationship with we may find ourselves defaulting to one or other boxes that are really problematic and hurtful. Um, so hopefully this is a tool to continue to reflect, like use to reflect on your yourself. I know it, um, every time I look at it, it's sort of, I can come up with, you know, the most recent example of I went not, or the most re recent example I went for and just use it as a tool for growth. The, the, LGBTQ community, um, you know, still has a lot of a lot of room for growth in terms of like, how do we make sure that we're doing our part to be supporting the Black Lives Matter movement? How do we make sure we're doing our part to support the, you know, violence happening to the Asian American co community? Um, how do we make sure we're doing our part to support trans athletes and and um, and just so many different aspects? Um, our fat queer folks, our, our poor queer folks. Uh, and so I think we got to talk about difference more um, and talk about what keeps us out of that with box with one another as much as possible. Um, I want to, we're down to just the last couple minutes. So uh, any questions at this moment? questions but thank you because i am i am reflecting cool awesome um yeah let's just do one final go around closing and um and then if there's any other questions we can go there but uh so one one takeaway from this session, this time that we had together over this last hour, um, one takeaway from the session is, anyone wanna start? I, 
I, I'll start. Uh, one takeaway <laughs> from this session is uh, kind of addressing my feelings in a situation so that I am able to reorganize expectations so that I'm not taking on too much, but but kind of going back from doing four, I don't know. So be able to talk about the effect that people are having on me in a way that, you know, I don't have to do everything because they understand where I'm coming from, I guess. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. I think I said Marcy earlier. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, who do you want to pass to? I'll pass it to Marcy. I think that, and for those of you that know me, Lindsay will especially find this interesting, that I'm actually in a better place than I thought I was and that I just need to continue on the path that I'm on and that nothing's ever going to be perfect all the time, but I can keep working towards, you know, a more perfect for me if I just continue, you know, on the path I'm on. And I'm going to tag in Polly. Thanks, Marcy. Ooh. I I think that um, takeaway for me is understanding uh, that when I'm doing the four, that I can be damaging relationships with people when I think that I'm trying to do the best for everybody, that I'm actually potentially injuring someone. Mm. And I'm going to pass, uh, let's just say Sean, why not? Um, no, I, I think my biggest takeaway is that, you know, with, with this chart that, um, you know, it can be applied, you know, both in your professional and personal life. But, you know, I, I think that I definitely bounce between, I definitely, at least in my professional life, I definitely bounce between the two and, and, the, and the four, um, sometimes a little bit more four. So just kind of learning, like, and I think that this is going to definitely help to propel myself to be a little less for um, and kind of just have a more harmonious, you know, uh, going between the boxes and being okay that sometimes it is okay to go into the not box, you know, um, and, 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 and sometimes it's good, you know, the not box allows you to kind of um, regroup and recollect, you know, um, and that it's not always a damaging thing to do. Um, but I overall, I, I love the session. I got a lot out of it. Cool. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, Polly, and you just reminded me of um, of a feedback I received from a, a friend who was a former colleague um, about a year ago. It, so I was no longer supervising her because we didn't work together anymore. We'd stayed friends. She's she's black. I'm white. And she said to me, you know, when you used to supervise me, there were a number of times she said where like you didn't hold me accountable for something and like what was up with that and it wasn't until she asked me that i realized oh, of course like when i reflected back it was so obvious to see my white male colleague oh i could tell him what to do all day long but my black female colleague like i was so afraid of being considered racist that I then deferred to the four box and then what I did and she asked me this within the context of being in a new she herself was in a new position at the time and she was struggling with some of the expectations so she asked it asked it of me within that context and I realized in that moment like I had denied her the opportunity for for certain levels of growth by not holding her accountable like I had really um, I had really robbed her of that uh, out of my own fear of how I may be perceived. And so this stuff is so complicated, but. Um, I, I live that feeling at work, the feeling that my um, straight cisgender Trump voting manager in Minnesota is treating me with fear, you know, mm -hmm. with, with not knowing how what he says is going to impact me as a trans person because he doesn't know any trans people and mm -hmm. because and so he's walking carefully around me and not treating me not not correcting me if i do something wrong 
maybe not giving me as much responsibility as he would someone else. I don't know. And I just, yeah. it's something that I never expected to see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that, Polly. Sean. Do you think, um, just out of curiosity, Chris, do you think that you would have had that same fear if it was not in a professional setting? Like coming off, maybe feeling like you might've come off like in a racist manner or I'm just curious. I'm just curious to see like what, what your point of view was. It's just something to even just Probably, think about. I mean, I think depending on the context, you know, if okay. I'm thinking about, um, I mean, if I'm just interacting with Nicole, this black woman as a friend, maybe not, but I think, I think like we live in such an oppressive world still that I think that fear play in many of our minds is like, I don't want to be racist or I don't want to be transphobic or I don't want to be, you know, heterosexist, but I don't want to be classist or I don't want to be, you know, seem like I don't like fat people. Like whatever it is, I think we have either, we don't know that we have a bias and we're like thinking shitty things about people or avoiding, you know, being in relationship with them because of a bias. Or I think we're afraid of screwing up. Um, and so I guess, yeah, I just welcome us to try and be as human as possible. Yeah, I get that. Because I think we're going, like, we can't avoid it. Like, the only growth is through some mistakes. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. I hope you have an awesome rest of the conference. Um, Thank you. And I hope to, hope to, yeah, be in relationship with you all in the, in the future. Yeah, that's Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Happy Friday. Yay. Now for hair and makeup. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Marcy. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Great meeting you all. Same. <laughs>